What's good, class? In this video, I will be reviewing expectation rules and how it gonna go down in my classroom. Here is all the rules that we will be operating in my classroom with for the remainder of the school year. Stay ready so you won't have to get ready. Simply as it says, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Don't be ratchet. We don't need drama kings or queens. Don't interrupt destruction. Who are you to disrupt destruction? Take care of business before you enter my class, not out there. Phones must be out of sight, out of mind. I have no time for this honesty of, of any kind, and that goes for academics. Respect everyone, peers, and any adult in school. Everything is now in the Google Classroom. Videos for the lesson, assignments, quiz, study guide, homework slides. Now. Be aware of this, there may be some assignments, a few of them, where they're not going to be a Google Slide, I would just hand them to you in person. Alright? If you are absent, you are still responsible to complete the work post in Google Classroom. Please do not make this the opportunity to not come to school just so you could think you could avoid my work. You are ultimately responsible for it and if you don't take care of business even when you are out of campus you you're gonna pay for it this time um again last semester i only had you guys for four class periods so i was a little bit more less tough but here you know either you're gonna show up or show out you know, or worse, get put out. Consequences, points reduction. So, in the classroom, I'm not going to be really addressing you too much because you guys know what you are doing in class. So I'm not going to say, stop this because I don't want to hear, I'm not talking. I don't want to get into that discussion. Like, take care of business so I don't have to waste my time. So now, during this time, I'm not going to waste my time, period. If you're not taking care of business, you disrupting class. Since all my lessons are going to be recorded, I could just simply just deal with you and just go on by my business. I'm not going to argue or fuss with you. I'm just going to probably say your name or come near your facility just write down notes so as i'm writing notes you don't know why i'm writing notes on yourself for the stuff that you're doing you are responsible enough to know what you are doing in class and so as i'm taking notes from my blue clipboard what you're doing again i'm just sitting there quietly watching you what you're doing just taking notes of it and again i'm not going to spend time on the board talking to the teacher my lessons are going to be recorded so i will be watching you guys circling in the classroom just taking notes and i get you out if i need to of course in a way so of course as you are being disrupted in my class depending on the situation i may take one point i may take five points i may take 10 points i may take 20. or you really push i take all your points which is going to be a zero for participation in the grade book. And then when you're being belligerent and you're doing too much, I would just simply remove you. And you guys know how I am. I have no interest in arguing with students. Teacher will calmly speak. Afterwards, assign discipline. That's how I'm operating. So yelling, raising your voice, anything like that, students, please be aware. That's not going to work. It didn't work in the few days I had you. It still won't work. Because all I'm going to do is just 
put a zero on you and just send you send you on out. Or write you up. I'm not going in fact I'm not going to add, force you to leave. I'm gonna ask you, you say no. I'm just gonna ride a minute and keep it going. Now if you keep disrupting after that, then I will leave the class to go get someone to come deal with you. Cause again, any drama or hate you have going on, don't bring it towards me or anyone in the classroom. So you know what's up. This is the teacher classroom, my classroom, and I make all of the decisions. The only decision you got to make is, are you going to complete the assignments or are you not? Are you going to try to get this education or are you not? Those are the only two decisions you have. Any other decisions is not. The teacher does not owe you an explanation unless it only pertains to the lesson. So if you, for some reason, receive a failing grade, you know what you did to get that failing grade. So I'm not going to go there with you. If I do give you an explanation, it's by my choice. And that's it. So there's no going back and forth. You know, you get in your feel like, bah, 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 bah. my response is going to be, oh, well, I'm not changing grades. Wherever you get, that's what you get. Or anything like that. To get a grade, you must earn it. Trust me, you're going to find out truly what that means. One thing that you're going to learn from me, class, is that you're going to learn how to work hard. Because in this world, there's n no one respects someone who... Expect to just get it for free and not working. You got homework every class period. Most times it's always going to be in Google Classroom. Sometimes it's going to be handed out to you. And again, if you are absent, it's all you got no choice. It's in Google Classroom. And even if I have a handout for you, you ask it, I'll have it ready for you. But it's your business again. Miss Howard. I saw the work in Google. Was there anything else you did in class? That is your responsibility, not mine. If you don't do anything after that, you're great. And trust me, my dear students, I have a reputation of seeing kids to summer school. I know some guys don't think that uh, I won't do it or can't do it. My only response is we shall see about that. Tips to being great. And these are tips to help the students out about being to be great. Because I noticed for the time that I've been at a streamer relating to what I see is that you guys are savages towards each other. It's like if you like if you sad or mad about something, the first thing you're gonna do is find someone to hate on because you're miserable. You know? You the miserable dude or the miser the misery girl. You just so sad and so bitter and hateful to a point that you go come out to people who are happy just so they could so you could bring them down and make them feel any sort of way. So here's some quotes to help out on that. When people are hating on you, that means they are obsessed with you and mad they can do what you do or have access to the things you have. They talk about Jesus and they will still talk about him if he walked among us. That's what Jesus had to go through. So when my parents taught me that quote, nothing didn't faze me. I got called some horrific names in my day, but again, none of that stuff faced me because, you know, I have, I had why, I got why I wanted. And I had the best life as a teenager, so I was never bothered by anyone comments or remarks. All right, only a sad, miserable, pathetic, miserable person. Would say vicious things just to make someone feel just as miserable. Look, 
if you are angry and have whatever your issues is, keep it to yourself, basically. Because your opinion of people is none of their business. You know? It's just not. Who are you to go to some kid and say something hateful about they looks or their appearance or whatnot. They looks or their appearance is nothing to do with you. What you assess with them, what you try to be with that person, you got a crush on that person, what have you? You know? I mean, people, don't be hateful. If no one's not breaking hate or anything that towards your direction, don't worry about it. You know? I mean, just don't. Gay, straight, enough of that orientation nonsense. Unless a person, you know, is bringing that kind of thing towards your direction, and you seen the person actually involved with that kind of orientation, don't say anything about it. Because one or two things going to happen. A, you make enough false stuff and you get in trouble for that. You know, you put in false information on people and you get in trouble. You spread it around too. You can't get in trouble for that. So again, unless you truly know, even if you do know, it's not your business towards, you know, to even go there with nobody. Last thing before we move on. Anything pertaining to adults, however they be or however they look is, what have you, anything of that sort of nature, it's not your affair to question or have interest in. You stay in a child place. You're not grown yet, so stay in your lane. All right. Now we can move on. How am I grading you? This is the business right here. Participation. 50 points per class. You know? Sometimes it's 100 points a week. Sometimes it's 150 points per week. You really, really want that participation to look good. You really want to be involved into the lesson, not being off topic or anything that's not related to the lesson. You want to be in it from start to finish. You know, again, this is your education. I already got mine. So if you don't want to learn or don't want to do anything of the sorts, you should not be. And I will be speaking with um, administrators to kind of help with that situation in terms of moving you to a place where you could not get an education because I just don't have time. Classwork. 20 points per class. And sometimes you may have multiple class assignments in the lesson. In the video that I may have some problems that you may have to do or I may direct you to go to Google Classroom to go handle. You got to get it done. Sometimes it would say group work. Sometimes they may say independently. Just get it done. Homework. Homework is 30 points per class. And please be aware that it's not going to be a simplistic four problems. That's not happening. Because we're in a new semester, things will be intense. This is the opportunity for you to really step up, show me what you got. Quiz, ask the tickets. 100 points per assignment. So in terms of the quiz, hmm. You know, quiz are not as often as our ask the tickets. So... The S ticket probably well it will be counted as classwork too. You got me? So the S ticket will be counted as classwork as well. So that's not gonna be really called a quiz. So only the quiz that I give you, which is maybe once every other week or something like that, that's gonna be your hundred points. 
tests and projects. That's 500 per test per project. All right. Any academic dishonesty will result into a zero for the first offense, the second offense, is apparent contact, administration involvement for the third and above. So each time you do it, you just get a zero. I'm letting you in for a little secret, y'all. I'm not going to give you an opportunity to redo any of that stuff you, you cheated on. You don't get the opportunity at all. I'm not a big fan of it, and let me tell you, cheating, it doesn't help you at all. It just makes you look like a lie and make the teacher look foolish. Academic dishonesty. Copying work from the internet and passing off as yours. Copying work from others and passing it as yours. Lying about doing the work independently or as group work. Giving information to a student to pass off as their original homework or work, I mean. This includes sharing, passing notes. These things are all considered academic dishonesty. So to sum it all up, what those four things are saying is pass on work that does not come from your thinking, your knowledge, is low down the lane. As I told you before, you would not get a makeup assignment on that. Stay ready so you want to get ready. Have our homework completed, ready to discuss. Come to class with supplies in hand. Return pencils from the teacher. Study before the test. Come to class ready to discuss and work all types of assignments. Get necessary gum or water to stay awake. And that's just pretty much just it. And that's how we're going to roll my um, rubrics of how I'm grading all this, how that will be posted later in Google Classroom. So again, the lessons we do, they're going to be mainly on the videos where I'm teaching you. I'm walking around to see what you're going to do. All right, y'all. That's it.